Hello, so we'll start this video on a good note. I finally got better gloves. These aren't the see-through ones. You know, so you can't actually see my fingernails or whatever disgusting things I was using in the last couple of videos. Struggling to find, I used to have the box that had the three different colors, the white, the pink, and the yellow. And those were cool, because I like wearing the pink and the yellow gloves, but I'll find a box of them eventually. But for now, these gloves will have to do. Anyway, where are we at? We have a lot of dirty glassware, which I still haven't cleaned. Sue me. Um, this is our nice dioxane from the last video, so we distilled it, it's above the azeotrope. We also have a small amount up here, uh, see that top layer, of um, more crude dioxane that we recovered from our, like our second round of distillation once we worked out that the thermometer was cactus. To get this dioxane to the same level as that, that dioxane, I have to take it off and then run a distillation and then combine the two, but Maybe I'll just remove the aqueous layer and then combine these two fractions because there shouldn't be heaps of water in this layer and this is going to be wet anyway. So it's going to make this yellow, but uh, I have a feeling it's going to go yellow anyway because all chemistry goes yellow in the end. Chemistry is the devil's work and yellow is the devil's color. So um, I'll just get rid of this water layer and then I'll combine the two. I'm explaining this now because if I came back and there was like an increased volume and it was yellow, that would make me look really bad. But no, it's just because I'm, I'm putting this crude fraction in there. Um, it'll all be purified by the end of the video, okay? Makes sense, let's do it. All right, we've got our yellow dioxane there. Now, what we're gonna do is chuck in a whole lot of sieves, molecular sieves, uh, straight from the box here. Um, they're a little dusty straight from the box, but we don't actually care about dust um, for this because we're all gonna distill it later on and everything like that. I've had these molecular sieves for about two years now. There's a running joke that I have with myself that whenever a video involves molecular sieves, it doesn't work and it never makes it to YouTube. And this is a joke that I've made a lot, but no one's ever seen it because those videos never make it to YouTube because I'm always correct. So hopefully I'll break that today. Amazingly, I managed to pour a whole heap of these in there without even using a funnel and I didn't even spill a single one, which is very out of character. For okay, there's, there's one there. Okay, I spilled one. That's still very out of character for me. I usually spill a lot more, so you cheeky bastard, making me look bad. If I can get in there. Just ignore the contamination risk that just caused. So the molecular sieves, they're like a porous zeolite. So they're like a, you know, they're insoluble material that's very porous. And those pores are the size of the water. So the water will go into the sieves and um, it will leave the dark sand behind. Oh, I was just cleaning this flask and I fucking, it just slipped from my hand and landed on the concrete. Fucking shit, oh, I'm, I'm fucked off. I just put in a new glassware order. These are the worst ones because like, if you shatter it, say you're doing some extreme heat thing and then it cools down and it breaks a little, you, you kind of, you know, say, oh, well, at least it, you know, was in the firing line and it, you know, and it broke. But when you just fucking, slips from your hand and you drop it and it shatters. That's what fucks me off. Like, ah, oh, ah, oh. I'm gonna go not do chemistry for a moment and calm down. It fucks me off. All right, so I've got the sieves out. I'm just giving them a quick wash with some ethanol um, and then I'll uh, dry them out. Well, I'll let them air dry and then dry them out. I've got our dark stain here. Uh, I've got an ice bath here, so it's kind of partly frozen at the moment. Um, I want to cool it down because I want to put some alkali metals in to dry it. Now, I could probably get it mostly dry without the alkali metals. Um, you know, with a combination of sieves and fractional distillation, you can actually get it pretty dry. I mean, they're good quality sieves, I believe. But I do actually want to use the alkali metals. And that's not because it's more fun, but actually because um, they're very old and uh, you should really sort of maintain alkali metals just to a certain amount because if they build up a lot of oxides on them, they tend to get a little bit uh, dangerous in a sense, especially potassium. So let's have a look at my sodium first. There's not a whole lot of it in here. It's probably about, uh, that was 100 grams initially. And it looks like it's mostly there. So it's probably about 40 grams of sodium, maybe a bit less. But um, you can see a quick glimpse of the potassium container on the back there. What you don't want potassium doing is going yellow. Once again, yellow chemistry strikes. And if it goes yellow, if your potassium is going yellow, it's a buildup of superoxides. And that's dangerous because it tends to be um, like explosive and that sort of dangerous thing. Um, so I had a look at my potassium the other day and look how yellow everything is on it. Look how yellow the mineral oil has gone. Yeah, so our lump of potassium's in there, and it's probably about 30 grams of potassium as well, maybe a bit less. 
but um, it's in it's in bad nick. It's uh, it needs some maintenance, as in like I need to chop off those oxides and uh, dispose of them. So we might as well use some of that alkali metal once we chop off all those outsides in uh, drying our dioxane. I don't know how much water is in here, and I, so I don't know how violent this reaction is going to be. I'll set up the um, reflux condenser and uh, I'll get the cooling going. You know, put in the ice bath. So hopefully we can control everything. And uh, just had a hydrogen explosion. Ooh, this is why this is dangerous. Glassware didn't break. Um, gain my composure for a second. A bit flustered. Glassware's okay. I'm okay. All right, this is a bit more safer now. Some potassium in there that's slowly bubbling. Bit too fast for my liking. Maybe I'll cool it down. What I was doing before, okay, and this is going to really sound very stupid in light of recent events. And to be honest, it is stupid, but I had the reflux condenser and then I, uh, I put the stopper on top of it. Um, this is because I didn't want air going in because it's quite humid today. Because the bubbling rate was so slow, occasionally I was just kind of venting it. And I put the stopper in very loosely, so the hydrogen, because hydrogen you know, an escape artist, it was going out. But uh, what happened was I wasn't venting it fast enough and uh, it allowed the hydrogen to build up here and all in through this column as well. And then uh, a bit of potassium must have just got hot enough. It sparked and, well, I didn't see any spark from here. Of course, I didn't get any of it on film. Bang, straight away. It's just a flash of light and then all the glass. Went, you know, this is where it fell and the stopper went across the room. So it was it was stupid of me, honestly. Um, let's get real for a second. It, you know, it could have seriously injured me. Um, so it's, it's not the best. We're okay. Is reacting pretty slowly. It, it, it looks like it's reacting fast now, but um, I did actually heat the solution up quite a bit because that last little batch of potassium, this is the third batch, it was reacting really quite slowly. So I've heated it up and uh, it's still taking its time. So I really don't think there's too much water left. Good news is our potassium is all clean. I'm gonna leave it in that yellow mineral oil because I don't think that poses any danger and at least it's dry at this point because it's had the potassium sitting in there for so long. You know, it will build up again slowly, but it won't be building upon the layers that are already there, if that makes any sense, because you really don't want a really thick layer of it on the potassium. That's good. That's all done. It's done its job in drying out the um, dioxane. So I'm going to set it up for um, simple distillation now. I'll set all that up. I'll put all the flammable metals away first. <laughs> then I'll set up for distillation. I'm discarding this first little bit because it's coming over where the temperature is a little low, which implies it's still at the azeotrope. What, what can you do? I mean, I could have dried it with more potassium, but... All right, so in an annoying turn of events, it's nowhere near as dry as I thought it was. Look how much has come over and we're still sitting below 90. So we're still really hitting most of the azeotrope. I'm gonna blame it on inexperience for totally misjudging how dry the solvent actually was. We've got that stuff there. We can always, we can just run it through the process again and read a still. All it's gonna cost me is time, but hopefully we get some dry stuff at least out of this run. Everything came over. <laughs> below 90 degrees and we're just left with a small amount of tar where does this tar keep coming from that are all there's always fucking more tar to come out there's this and everything in that plastic cup i distilled it into the plastic cup because i thought there's going to be five to ten mils which we'll just throw out but it ended up being everything so what are we going to do um i've re-dried some sieves and uh we're just going to put it back in the process again i guess this time we we'll use sodium because it's cheaper than the potassium i'm not just doing this for the video i'm actually doing this for a purpose and if i don't get it right here later on it's not going to work at all so i might as well put all the extra effort in here getting this really good so that we have the best chance later on
All right, so I thought the sodium would be consumed up very quickly or like, you know, maybe an hour or two. But what ended up happening is that it didn't dissolve in about the six hours I had before I had to pack everything up. And that presented a bit of a problem because I had the drying tube on there, right? And the drying tube stops water from getting in, but it was letting air in. So the little bits of sodium were turning quite yellow as they uh, pulled oxygen from the air because they were floating on top a lot of the time, forming like, you know, oxides, peroxides and that kind of thing. So I didn't want to leave it with just the drying tube on there because the sodium would just keep reacting with the air. But I also didn't want to put the stopper in because like last time we could have had a slow hydrogen build up and then another hydrogen explosion. Didn't want that. So my only option, well, the only option I thought of was to actually freeze it. And that way the sodium stops reacting with the, the water and the dioxane because there is nothing, you know, they can't float around and also the temperature is very low, but in the solid state, there's gonna be no reaction. So that was fine to stop her up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this thaw out and then I'm going to um, set it up for reflux. Quite nice actually, look at those huge crystals. Yes, yeah, so I set it up for reflux. Now uh, the only other thing I've got to check is actually I wanna calibrate that thermometer We'll just check in boiling water that it actually reads 100 because if the thermometer is reading wrong, like it was last time when I did the dioxane because I fucking cracked it open. But yeah, if, if the thermometer is off, then um, it would explain why we're, we actually have dried our dioxane. That's why it's not reacting with the sodium, but um, the thermometer is reading wrong. Anyway, yeah, I'll let this thaw out and then I'll, I'll get it to reflux. All right, I think I found the culprit. This is the uh, thermometer we were using before and it's been very slow to respond. And this is obviously boiling water. So it should be all be reading at exactly 100, but this has been reading oh, just on 92. It's just managed to push very slowly up to 95 odd. It's very slow to get that last little bit. So um, it's very, it's reading, reading, you know, five to 10 degrees under which is no good and definitely affected how dry we thought our dioxane was last time. Um, this other 200 um, degree thermometer is even worse. It's reading at 90, not going above 90. Where's 100 one? It's like a, at least 105. In short, I don't trust any of these thermometers. To be fair, they are cheap Chinese thermometers, but I should have definitely checked them a lot more than I have been. Um, let's see how good my thermocouple is. Chuck this bad boy on. So the response time will be down a bit because it's in such that th a thick pipette there. Yeah, see that's okay. We're going to be using the thermocouple and uh, make sure you remind me just to not trust thermometers within five to ten degrees from now on. And if I want something more accurately, I'll, I'll use the thermocouple. I might buy some more thermocouples. Remind me to do that. All right, you can see now that the sodium is molten. Look how nice and shiny it is. Look at those. Beautiful if I just turn the steering off for a little bit. Look at those beautiful bits of sodium. It's pretty dry. We'll let this go for like an hour or so. Um, but you know, look how nice and shiny those sodium bits are and, and they're not really going anywhere fast. So this might actually also fuck my stir bar a little because molten sodium is one of the few things that can really uh, get into Teflon and, and ruin it. But hey, all in the name of science. Once again, it's nice to break things in the process of doing things rather than just dropping them on the ground every so often. So you, you only live once, you know. All right, I've let it cool. It was refluxing for about three hours, but I've let it cool now. Um, just enough that the sodium solidified. I was thinking about getting the sodium out and, you know, saving it, but it's just going to be too hard because the sodium wants to flow around the edges and I can only get the tongs into the center and... All right, we're doing it. Look at that temperature. Look at that. that's that's close enough to 100 for me to believe that it's actually anhydrous <laughs> dioxane coming over. We've had to go to great lengths here. I'm sure it's not that hard. I'm sure I'm just making it harder than it is. But you know, what's new in this channel? Um, you'll notice that I'm using a slightly different um, distillation setup because usually what I do is I have you know the vacuum takeoff adapter here, but this is actually just the corner piece without the vacuum takeoff adapter. Um, I think that's meant to be used with a Graham condenser, but you know, fuck Graham condensers, useless condensers. Currently, I think I've used every single condenser is dirty currently, except the Graham condenser was just sitting in my cupboard unused because you know, who uses a Graham condenser?
that means we still need like, you know, room for the gases to expand. Well, not gases, but like when we heat it up, you know, we can't just have a sealed system. So um, I put the drying tube on the end of this um, three neck flask and it's got a third neck because I didn't have a two neck flask. So that's why there's a third neck there. So yeah, <laughs> you just use what you have really. We're gonna do it. Yeah, three figures, baby. Come on. Give me that three figures. Oh, for all right, we are all done. Yeah, that's that's good enough. Look at that little bowl of sodium in there. Uh, we'll probably recover that, honestly. Um, and the dark stain's looking great. There's a lot less than I want for my application that I'm going to use it for, but we'll make do. I'm going to put it in this nice new container here over some more sieves. All right, here's our final yield. We've got 125 grams or so of dioxane. I froze it here. Um, it has a freezing point of about 10 degrees. So just in my normal fridge at four degrees, it freezes uh, really well. That was just a quick test to see if it's actually reasonably pure because, um, you know, if it's got any water, it'll have quite a different freezing point. But the freezing point seems pretty spot on. It's got a density of about one. So it's roughly 123 or so mils. So yeah, no worries. It was, took a bit of effort, but uh, we got there. Thanks for watching, and um, hopefully it's uh, dry enough for our application, which I haven't mentioned what my application actually is for it, but um, we'll get there. I'll show you what I'm, I plan to do with it eventually. Something new. <laughs>